chemotherapy that accompanies the stem cell transplant is usually given in massive amounts, massive doses, meaning that this chemotherapy is hopefully able to ablate and eradicate any micro tumor cells or any small number of tumor cells or small number of disease cells. And the doses of chemotherapy are very, very high and the complications are associated with the aggressiveness of the high doses of chemotherapy. And the complications are starting from fatigue, hair loss, nausea, vomiting, mouth sores, low blood counts requiring blood and platelet transfusions, immune suppression leading to infections, fevers, bleeding, um, loss of appetite, uh, obviously infertility, uh, and things like that. But the, you know, that is the mainstay of treatment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is the high doses of chemotherapy. And I think the stem cells, they make it possible for the delivery of high doses of chemotherapy. Day one, um, what you will come in as you did previously. Mm -hmm. I'll be drawing your bloods through your central line just to check the blood counts to make sure the white cells are okay. Nothing has changed. Your potassium, your electrolytes are, are okay. After that, we'll start the prehydration. That will run for about two hours. Probably about a half an hour before fluid is to end, I will come in and I will give you antiemetics. Usually that's Kytro, Decadron, and Ativan. Those are used to prevent nausea during the chemo. About 15 minutes before the chemotherapy is to start, I'll be giving you ice. Uh, what you'll have to do is um, pack your mouth with ice 15 minutes before, during the chemotherapy, the melphalan, which will run for about 15, 20 minutes, and after the chemotherapy, which will um, be about 15 minutes. So all together, you're looking at about an hour and a half. The purpose of the ice is to decrease the blood flow to the mouth because we don't really need the chemo going there. And what that's going to do is cut down on the uh, blood supply there and therefore you won't have mouth sores. Because if you are to get mouth sores, um, that could be devastating. You can end up your mouth cavity from your mouth, oral cavity, mm -hmm. all the way down your um, digestive system, your mucosa. And once that becomes compromised, um, you could bleed, you could have a lot of pain, you could end up in the hospital, you could actually end up on a morphine drip because you won't be able to swallow and it would be very, very painful. I'll give you an idea of what's going to happen. So obviously the room is going to be busy and crowded. Mm -hmm. You'll have Cynthia come in, she's your one-to-one -one nurse, and she's going to sit over here and put you on the monitor. Mm -hmm. The monitor allows us to watch your um, oxygen levels, it allows us to watch your heart rate and your heart rhythm, and it allows us to monitor your blood pressure along the way. Okay. All of those things can be affected by the DMSO that your stem cells have been preserved in. So we really want to monitor them carefully. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, is we give you pre-medications, as we did when you had the high-dose melphalan. Right. But some of those medications make you a little bit sleepy. And when you're a little bit sleepy, you don't take such deep breaths and your oxygen levels may drop. Mm -hmm. So don't, and this is for you too, yep. so, you know, don't be fearful if we wake you up and say, you know, Diane, we're going to put a little oxygen on you. Okay. It doesn't mean that anything is going wrong. Okay. It just Good means you're sleepy, not taking deep breaths. We're either going to poke you and keep telling you to do so. Okay. Or we're just going to give you a little bit of oxygen All so right. we can let you sleep. We've already started IV fluids, mm -hmm. so you get prehydration. And then afterwards, you'll get post-hydration. In a little while, the blood bank will come up and they're gonna come up with a bath that kind of uh, warms up the stem cells. So they're still frozen right to the minute they come into the room for you, mm -hmm. okay? We're gonna give you all of the bags back. You collected five bags, or you know, we processed them in five bags. Um, you collected nine million cells per kilogram. So that's a really good, yeah, yeah that's a really good collection, that's okay? Great. So, what the blood bank will do is they will thaw out your bag one bag at a time. Mm -hmm. They'll thaw it out to your body's temperature because you don't want anything super cold and you certainly don't want anything super hot, right? right? Okay. Um, as they thaw it out one bag at a time, then they'll hand it off to me. We do double checks. So we'll talk to each other about the bag, the volumes, the amount of stem cells, who you are mm -hmm. and when your birthday is. Okay. So often you'll hear me saying, even though you know I know you, mm -hmm. um, you'll hear me saying, Diane, what's your birthday? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. 
It's not because I don't remember. It's just <laughs> because we're doing the double check. So that will happen for each bag, mm -hmm. okay? And when we're halfway done with one bag, they'll start warming up the next bag. Okay. All right. Uh, you'll probably be sleepy through this, okay? Okay. You've already had some Benadryl prior to the chemotherapy, and it really didn't make you fidgety or anxious, which sometimes it does. Mm -hmm. So I anticipate for you that you're going to be more sleepy than anything. Okay. All right? But easily I'll be able to wake you up right. and talk to you. Okay. If you want to stay awake during the process and you want to ask questions, you're more than welcome to. But don't fight the sleep. Okay, I won't. Okay? Yep. One thing I'm certain the audience, Dr. Selden, is thinking, if patients are ill with some abnormal uh, protein in their blood, and you do a stem cell transplant where you're freezing that person's blood, how mm -hmm. is it that when you uh, put the cells back in mm -hmm. the patient, the disease doesn't just regrow? Yeah, that's a great question, but it seems like when we collect the cells, which Dr. Santuala described with the uh, mobilization process, we get healthy cells and the uh, abnormal cells that are responsible for the disease are for the most part left behind in the bone marrow and then they get taken care of by the chemotherapy that the patient goes through. Uh, the cells that are put back into the patient as part of the transplant appear to be healthy cells and, uh, and uh, in the best of cases don't uh, provide any problems in the future. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, a leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.org.